live from the Bill Graham Auditorium in San Francisco. It's the Cube covering Pure Storage Accelerate 2018. Brought to you by Pure Storage. Welcome back to Pure Pure Storage Accelerate 2018. I'm Lisa Martin with the Cube. I'm with Dave Vellante. We are here in San Francisco at the Bill Graham Civic Auditorium, which is why we're sporting some concert T-shirts. Um, who? <laughs> the Who and the Klong. Roger. <laughs> Roger Dolce. Roger. Yeah. <laughs> we are here with the CIO of the David Geffen School of Medicine at UCLA. Pure customer Ben Nathan. Ben, welcome to the Cube. Thanks for having me. So, talk to us about. Um, the, the School of Medicine at UCLA, you are the CIO there, you've been there for about three years. Give us a little bit about of, the, of the, kind of a 10,000 foot view of, of what your organization looks like to support the School of Medicine. Sure, we're um, about 170 people. Um, we have changed a lot over the last three years. When I got to UCLA, there was uh, kind of 25 separate IT organizations, all um, smaller groups operating in each individual department, and they had built their own um, sets of managed infrastructure uh, distributed throughout you know, every sort of closet and, and cranny, nook and cranny in the school. And so um, we've consolidated all of that under you know, one set of service lines, one organization, um, and that's included consolidating all the, the systems and applications as well. So. Um, we've brought all those together and, and now we're um, additionally running IT for three more health sciences schools at UCLA, nursing, dentistry, and the School of Public Health, building School of Public Health. Like a lot of CIOs, you serve many masters. You've got the administration, you've got the students, right? you, you've, you've got the broader, the, the, the broader constituency, the community, UCLA. Um, where do you start? What's the quote unquote customer experience that you're trying to achieve? Um, we do, that's a great way to put it. There's really sort of four pillars that we try to serve. Um, the patient being first and foremost. So for us, everything is built around a great patient experience. And that means that when we're educating students, it's so they can be great providers of patient care. When we're doing research, um, we're doing that research in the, in the you know, effort to eradicate disease, et cetera. Um, and when we're doing community outreach, it's also you know, um, around improving uh, health and, and people's lives. So um, in IT, we try to stay very connected to those missions, you know, and I think it's a large part of what drives people to be part of um, an organization that's healthcare, or, uh, that's a provider. You know, that mission is really, really important. So yes, we're serving all four of those things at once. So you had, Lots of silos, lots of data that's only continuing to grow, but this is data that, you know, literally life and death decisions can be made on this. Talk to us about the volumes of data, all of the, all of the different sources that are generating data, people, sensors, things, yeah. and how did you make this decision to consolidate leveraging pure storage as part of that foundation? Yeah, there's an incredible amount of work going on at UCLA, um, you know, in particularly in, in the research, education, and patient care spaces. The, um, we had every brand of server and storage that you've never heard of, you know, and, and things bought at, you know, sort of, just sort of lowest bidder methods, but um, the technical debt that we had incurred as part of that was enormous, right? It's unsustainable, it's unsupportable, it's insecurable. Uh, so um, when when I got there and we started to think about what do, how do we deal with all of this, we, we knew we had an opportunity to sort of greenfield an infrastructure and consolidate everything onto it. So um, that was the first you know, that was what started us down the road that led us to Pure as one of our major storage vendors. I had worked with them before, um, but, you know, they won on their merits, right? I, we don't, we, we do these, um, you know, very rigorous RFP processes when we do, when we buy things. The, the thing that really, I think, got them the, um, the victory with us is that the, um, Deduplication of data got us to something like an eight to one ratio of you know virtual to physical. So um, we get 
a lot of virtual servers running on you know relatively small amount of storage, um, and that it's encrypted you know sort of all the time, right? There's, it's not like a switch you might flip or something a vendor says they'll do, but it, they don't on. really do. It is always on, and it's critical for us. Like we were really building a far more secure and manageable you know set of services, and and so all the um, vendors we work with kind of meet that criteria. So as a CIO, I would imagine you don't want to wake up every day and think about storage. All, with all due respect to our friends at, at Pure. That is true. So how has bringing an infrastructure in like Pure that you know, prides itself on simplicity allowed you to do the things that you really want to do and need to do for your organization? Yeah. I mean, I'll give you a two-part answer. I mean, one is simply like, I think it's operationally a really great service. I think that it's well designed and run and managed and, and we get great use out of it. I think the thing that makes it so that I don't have to think about it is actually the, the business model that they have. So um, the fact that I know that it's not going to really obsolete on its own, you know, that you get to up, if, as long as you're like in the support model, you're um, upgrading the system every few years, changes, you know, the, the um, model for me, because I don't have to think about these new massive capitalization efforts, it's more of a, a predictable operational cost, and that helps me sleep, you know, well, because I, I know what we look like over the next few years, and I can explain that to my financial organization. Just to follow up on that, a, a large incumbent storage supplier or system vendor might say, well, we can make that transparent to you. We can use our financial services arm to, to, to hide that complexity or you know, make a cloud-like rental experience or um, you know, do play financial games you know, to, yeah. to hide that. Why does that not suffice for you? Well, um, I mean, I think first and foremost, I, we sort of want to run our financials on our own and we're pretty um, you know, anxious about having anyone else in the middle of all that. And then, um, Number two is I, it, it seems to me different in terms of Pure having built that model from the ground up as part of their service offering. So I don't think we see that with too many other vendors and I think that um, you know, obviously there's far less technical debt than what I had in the previous you know, design, but it still can add up if you're not careful about um, you know, whatever, what server mechanism you have in place, et cetera. But it eliminates the forklift upgrade. Yeah. Right, even with those financial incentives or, or tricks, you still got to forklift it, and it's a disrupt disruption to your operations. Yeah, and I'm sure that's true, yeah. So when you guys were, uh, you know, back what, year and a half or so, maybe two years ago, looking at this consolidation, where were your thoughts in terms of, um, Beyond consolidation and, and looking at being able to harness the power of AI, for example, you know we talk, we've hear, heard a lot about AI today already, and this need for you know legacy infrastructures are insufficient to support that. Was that also part of your plan? Was not simply to consolidate and bring your your uh, VMware environment onto pure storage, but also to leverage a modern platform that could allow you to harness the power of AI? Yeah, that was sort of the later phase bonus period that we're starting to enter now. So after we sort of consolidate and secure everything, now we can actually do you know, far more interesting things that would have been much more difficult before. And in terms of pure, you know, I think it, when we had set out to do this, the, we imagined um, doing a lot of our analytics and AI machine learning um, kind of cloud only. And um, we tried that. We've done, we're doing a lot of really great things in the cloud, but not all of it is, uh, makes sense in that environment, um, either from a cost perspective or from a capabilities perspective. So, um, you know, particularly with what Pure has been announcing lately, I think there's a, a really good opportunity for us to build um, high performance computing clusters in our on-premise environment that leverage Pure as a, a potential storage backend. Um, and that's where our really interesting data goes. So um, we can do, you know, the analytics or the AI and machine learning on you know, uh, the data that's in our electronic medical record or um, in our genomics workflows or things like that can all flow through a service like that and there's, you know, some interesting discoveries that ought to come from it. Ben, there's a lot of talk at this event about uh, artificial intelligence, machine intelligence. H how do you see uh, AI in healthcare generally and specifically how you're going to apply it? Um, is it helping doctors with diagnoses, is it maybe maintaining better compliance, or? 
Talk about I, that I think there's like, there's two things that that I can think of it, it, off the top of my head. The, the first is um, decision support. So this is, you know, helping physicians when they're working directly with patients. There's only you know, there's so many systems, so many data sets, so many um, ways to analyze, and yet, like, getting it all in front of them in some kind of real-time way so that they can use it effectively is tricky. Um, so AI, machine learning have a chance to help us, like, funnel that into something that's immediately useful in the moment. And then the other thing that we're seeing is that um, most of the research on genomics and the outcomes that have resulted in changes to clinical care are around, you know, sort of individualized mutations in a single, like, um, you know, nucleotide. So there's, th those are, I guess, quote, relatively easy for a researcher to pick out. You know, there's a, there's a letter here that is normally a different letter. But there are other, um, it, you know, uh, scenarios where there's not a, a direct easy tie from a single mutation to an outcome. So like in um, autism or diabetes, we're not sure what the genetic like kind of components are, but we think that, you know, with um, AI and machine learning, it will, those things will start to identify patterns in genomic sequences that humans aren't, you know, finding with their typical approaches. And so we're really excited to see you know, our genomic platform's built up to the point where they have enough sequences in them to do that sort of analysis. And you need, you know, big compute, fast storage to do that kind of thing. How is it going to help, um, you know, the big compute, the fast storage, this, uh, this modern infrastructure, help, whether it's genomics or clinicians, be able to sort through massive amounts of data to try to find those needles in the haystack? Because I think the stat this morning that, that Charlie Giancarlo mentioned was, was a half a percent of data in the world is analyzed. So how is that under the hood infrastructure going to help facilitate your smart folks getting those needles in the haystack to start really making yeah. big impacts? I mean, UCLA has an incredible faculty, like brilliant, brilliant researchers. And um, sometimes what I found since I've gotten there, what the only ingredient that's missing is you know, the platform where they can do some of this stuff. So, some of them are incredibly enterprising. They've built their own platforms for their own analysis. Others we work with, you know, they have a lot of data sets. They don't have a place to put them where they can properly interrelate them and do, you know, and apply their um, algorithms at scale. You know, so I've, we've run into people that are trying to do these massive analyses on like a laptop or a little computer or whatever. And, um, it just fails, right, or it runs forever. So giving them, you know, providing a way to have the infrastructure that, that, that they can run these things is really the, the ingredient that we're trying to add. And, and so that's, you know, about storage and compute, et cetera. How, how do you see the role of the CIO evolving? We hear a lot of people on theCUBE and in these conferences talk about digital, digital transformation, the digital CIO. H how much of, of that is permeating your organization and, and what do you think it means to the CIO role going forward? Yeah, I, mean, I wish I knew the real answer to that question. I don't know, time will tell. But I think that certainly um, we're trying to follow the trends that, that we see more broadly, which is that the, you know, there's, a, there's a job of keeping the lights on, of operations, and like you're not really, you shouldn't have a seat at any other table until those things are quite excellent. Table sticks. Yeah, yeah. right, exactly, table sticks. Security, all that stuff. Once you've got that, you know, we, my belief is like you need to deeply understand the business and find your way into um, helping to solve problems for it. And so, you know, in our realm, a lot of that these days is um, how do we sort of understand the student journey from prior to, you know, from when they maybe want to apply all the way to when they go out and become a resident and then a physician. There's a ton of data that's gathered along that way, and it, you know, it's, but we get asked a lot of questions we don't have easy answers to, but if we put the data together properly, we start to, right? On the research side, um, you know, same sort of idea. R right, where um, the more we know about the particular like clinical outcomes they're trying to achieve or even just basic science research that they're looking into, the better that we can kind of micro-target a solution to them for. So whether it's an on-prem, like private cloud or public cloud, either one of those can be harnessed for like 
really specific workloads. And, and I think when we start to do that, we've enabled our faculty to do things that, you know, it's been tougher for them to do before. So once we yeah, understand the business in those ways, I think we really start to have, you know, a, a uh, an impact at the strategic level of the organization, you know? So you've, you've, you've got this centralized services model that was a strategic initiative that you put in place. Um, you've got the foundation there that's going to allow you to start opening up other opportunities. Uh, I'm curious, in the UCLA system, maybe the UC system, are there other um, organizations or schools that are looking at what you're doing as a model to maybe replicate across the system? I think there's, um, I don't know about a model. I, I think there's certainly efforts among some to find, to centralize at least some services because of economies of scale or security or, or you know, all the normal things um, with the anticipated, and then anticipating that that could like uh, ultimately provide more value once the, the sort of baseline stuff is out of the way. Um, you see it's you know vast and varied system, so um, there's a lot of amazing things going on in different realms, and we're, I think, doing more than ever working together um, and, and trying to find common like solutions to problems. Um, so we'll see whose model <laughs> you know works out. Yeah. Well, Ben, thanks so much for stopping by the Cube and sharing the impact that you're making at the UCLA School of Medicine, leveraging storage and all the different capabilities that that is generating. We thank you for your time. Thanks so much for having me. We want to thank you for watching the Cube. I'm Lisa Martin with Dave Vellante. We are live at Pure Accelerate 2018 in San Francisco. Stick around, we'll be right back with our next guest.